Welcome to another exciting episode of the Path to Millionaires podcast. I am Ryan Feldman, and I am joined with Sebastian Constantine. And uh, Sebastian, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself and just tell the people uh, who you are and, and what you do. Hello. Well, my name is Sebastian Constantine. I'm a Tai Chi instructor. I also teach Qigong, physical conditioning, and uh, I'm a massage therapist. I practice Thai massage. Wow. Okay. So we were talking about this just a moment ago. Um, I, I don't expect a lot of my audience to even really know what Tai Chi is. So can you, can you explain what that is? I, yes, yes. All I know about it is well, Tai means beginning and Chi means ending, right? Something like that. Something like that. To cover okay. it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see Tai Chi, actually it's a martial art, okay. an ancient martial art. But the, the training system was completely different. The movements were slow, so we can see that everywhere. The idea was the complete relaxation, body and mind. So uh, this complete relaxation will uh, actually use the, the force of the opponent. The power will take in the power of the opponent and turn it against. Later on, people practicing it and developing a whole philosophy, they realized that this one has also benefits uh, on uh, medical terms, like it would be like a therapy. So they start practicing this more likely for health, as we see today. Mainly seniors, they practice this Tai Chi for health. That doesn't mean Tai Chi could not be practiced for self-defense or for fighting. Actually, Tai Chi is also practiced for performance. There are championships, exactly like gymnastic floor exercises. Wow. And the demonstrations are amazing. But mainly it's practiced for health because you see nowadays also, this is the practical side of the things. We go out, we're not going to get into a fight right away. But health, we need it day, day after day, all our life. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know. I I got my son into Taekwondo and then I started doing that as well. And, you know, it's another one of those things where um, there's definitely the self-defense element to it. But, um, you know, in my typical day, uh, I don't really expect to get into a fight. So even though that's, that's interesting to me, the real benefits are like the health benefits, staying, staying active, the cardio. So I can see the appeal in that. So um, how, long, how long have you been practicing Tai Chi? Over 10 years now. Wow. Okay. So what made you, what got you started into Tai Chi? <laughs> this is a funny question that uh, was asked <laughs> to me also when I went to China first time. So you see, as a kid, I was very attracted to Kung Fu movies. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, start practicing karate it didn't really appeal to me. But sometimes in these Kung Fu movies, there was a sequence when everything will stop and someone will practice this Tai Chi with slow movements, very elegant. And I was really attracted to that. Years later, I discovered that was Tai Chi. When I took my son to a Kung Fu course, someone in the back was practicing Tai Chi. And then I start gathering information and I, look, I start looking for courses. I changed a few masters and here I am. Oh. Keep on practicing. That's great. You see Tai Chi, if uh, I am to go to the origin, Tai Chi was uh, invented or developed when uh, people they were more like wrestlers, very stocky, very strong. Right. So uh, all these low postures, they were for stability. And when someone will uh, try to push this fighter, this fighter will take the arms, let's say, the adversary, and try to unbalance him to, like, let's say we push someone, the first instinct of the person is to draw back. And at that point, we can push further, or we can change the direction of pushing using his own uh, movement. So you, like, you use their weight against them, right? Yes, yes, okay. something like that. Yeah. That makes sense to me, very cool. And then also when we are pushed in Tai Chi, we do not oppose, but we relax completely. So this person that pushes, it will push like into nothing, into emptiness. And by a sudden turn, 
we can deviate this direction and make it fall. Wow. <laughs> yes. That's fascinating. It's, but it's such uh, a... actually, it, it's very interesting. It's very interesting if someone will dedicate some time to study. Right. But people realizing that through this relaxation, first of all, the nervous system starts to work better. Then through this lower posture, the, the core is uh, challenged and the abdominals, so the digestion, the metabolism increases. And slowly, slowly, people may realize that they, they can improve their balance, their stability. They can organize their mind by practicing all this long. So slowly, slowly, they, they got it, as I said, as a therapy, as beneficial for health, to help themselves. Yeah. And um, I, I've been practicing this in the beginning, only Tai Chi. So I say, well, this is a set of movements. It's okay. It's okay. Then I got to know Qigong. I realized that one and the other, they complete themselves. Qigong and Tai Chi, they are like brothers and sisters. Tai Qigong will prepare the body for Tai Chi. Then uh, I got more into yoga, more likely mind fullness yoga so we understand this system of thinking of yoga the system of breathing and everything all the systems in our body how they correlate together and then i start with thai massage which is actually actually the application of qigong or yoga or all of them to help someone else i don't know if you know the thai massage is completely different from many other form of massage. I don't, I was just about to ask you what, what the difference is between a Thai massage and a conventional. Is that the the let's say the patient or the client, it's on the floor, on a mat. It's okay. not on the massage table, nothing. We don't use any oil. And uh, people, they do not remove their clothes. Okay. And through a system of pressing and stimulating the acupuncture points, the body will be open, will be woke up. And then we do stretches, intense stretches of the body. So it's highly, it's like a workout. It's like a mutual benefit workout. Once okay. for the therapist, once for the client. Wow. It doesn't resemble with massage at all. That's okay. why I'm attracted to this. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't sound quite as like, sometimes in massage, I'll, I'll almost fall asleep. You know, I get almost too relaxed. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it, it, there's definitely benefits um, if, if my body feels tense to get loose, yes, yes, but it, sure, it doesn't necessarily sure. feel like a, a workout. Yes. That's interesting. So what exactly is it working out? Is it making you more flexible? Is it making you stronger? Or a little bit of all. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's say Tai Chi. Well, Tai Chi, okay. you see, most of the time we, uh, we hold our weight on one leg, right. on one foot, and we squat in the same time. So it's an intense uh, workout for the thighs. And also the core, the lower back, it has to hold all together. And in the meantime, we, we move, so we challenge our balance as well. Then Qigong will uh, enhance the breathing, the breathing while doing exercise, while doing movement. So will enhance a deeper relaxation, which is also a yoga state of mind. Yeah. And then, chi, and then Thai massage finally is done with the help of someone else. We could do all this together, but if we benefit from someone else more experienced help, it, it has even more results for yeah. ourselves. I right. myself, whenever I have the chance to go to Thailand, because there it's a very intense and very good Thai massage. I go for uh, this kind of uh, wellness therapy. <laughs> okay, so you went to Thailand to, to learn all about this? Yes, yes, I, I okay. went to Thailand to learn Thai massage and I went to China to learn Qigong and Tai Chi. Yeah, and, and then Qigong and Tai Chi, I mean, those are from China, correct? Yes, they are from, okay. the, from China, traditional Chinese, yes. So how, how old is the art of Tai Chi? I think it started at uh, around around 1500 or okay. 1600 with the family Chen. Yeah. That's... They're, they're by family, Chen, Yang. Uh, yes, these are family names. Yeah, and they define the styles. Wow. So okay. this family has discovered the new style of fighting, a new style of self. You see, uh, at that time, people, they were fighting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so they needed to come to something new to counterattack all this. 
So they developed all this technique and they were practicing in secret. And there was a, a servant called Yang. And this guy, he kept on spying on them, but he was very innovator. So he created the still Yang, which now it's most popular. Actually, the still Chen is very little known because still Chen, it's more close to Kung Fu. It has sometimes sudden movements, powerful, uh, combined with the slow motion movement. Yeah. And uh, this guy, was, with the acceptance of his master, went to Beijing and he promoted the new style. So this is how people, they learn about Tai Chi and later on they were more interested, they learned, they studied. Now there are five styles, then they come from one to another. And even nowadays there are competition, like fighting competition, or uh, one of them is called pushing hands. I don't know if you're familiar with this. I'm, I'm not, tell me more. Yes. Pushing hands, uh, people, they will try to destabilize each other by pushing one hand against the opponent hand. Okay. Or it can be done with both hands. They can turn around. That's a lot of styles, a lot of, it can be quite spectacular. And it's yes. without any violence, without any strikes. Really? It's just it's, by moving around. It sounds like, a, like an elegant sumo wrestling style. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, elegant sumo wrestling because uh, it's a good com comparison with sumo because there's another Tai Chi competition called freestyle and that's exactly like sumo who will push uh, first the other outside the circle but unlike um, sumo these, these tend to be um, more slim smaller people I would assume uh, not quite really the, some Tai Chi masters are quite uh, Stalking. Because <laughs> <laughs> they enhance all this uh, lower abdominal breathing, lower stances, uh, developing the, the core, the lower, the, this area, the hips. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Okay, yes. cool. Cool. All right. So Tai Chi, uh, Yi Chong is, what's the difference between Tai Chi and Yi Chong? I don't, I'm not familiar with Yi Chong really. We sorry, we? With the, uh, Qi uh, Kong, excuse me, Qi Kong. Oh, Qi Kong. Qi Kong is just, um, it could be compared with uh, physical therapy. Okay. They're just exercises. It's the exercises. Tai Chi, it characterized through routines. Mm -hmm. In Chinese, they are called actions. It's exactly like uh, Japanese kata. So it's a series of movements that simulates uh, imaginary fight with uh, adversary. Also, it's characterized through these exercises of pushing hands and uh, freestyle. And um, yeah, so it's completely fighting. It's also mental, but mainly all the figures, they are derivated from fighting. Unlike Qigong, Qigong has exercises for kidneys, has exercises for lungs, has exercises for joints and so on and so forth. Really? So if you say, say you have bad joints, like your knees are constantly bothering you, people will, will do this, uh, this Qi Kong and, and you're seeing some health yes, benefits yes. to their... Really? Will help, will help. But will first, help. Any, um, other, any therapist that knows what it does will start with massage. Okay. Or acupuncture things like this, to, yeah. to fix the person, if the person really has problems. And okay. after this, when the person is able to do light exercising, we'll start with Qigong. Wow. Not right away. Not okay. right away. Yes. Okay. So if a newcomer comes up to you, the first step is the massage? Depends on newcomer's uh, right. condition, physical okay. condition, shape. If they are quite in shape, why not? They start with uh, high level Qigong exercises. Okay. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Um, now, now you, you teach this. Do you, do you teach this online? Do you teach this in person? You know, where, where do you typically teach people? Well, I used to give courses and have clients, but now with right. COVID, I'm more online. I have my YouTube channel and I'm very active. Yeah, well, well, yeah. It's, we're fortunate to have the internet right now. Otherwise, I don't know how else we could, you know, keep up with it. Tai Chi channel is uh, the channel is Tai Chi International and Tai Chi International. Very good. Thank you. 
Yeah, um, I I do um, Taekwondo, as I said, and, and we've been doing classes online and, you know, it's um, it's better than nothing. It, it keeps you practice. It keeps the, the muscle memory going. But at the, at the same time, you know, I, I know when I'm in person, it's a lot easier for people to recognize the little tiny mistakes I'm making. So um, I, I do miss like the, the, you know, actual physical classes that I know to take, but um, these, these online classes are great too. And you can reach a much bigger audience this way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, like, um, in Tai Chi, the, one of the ideas is um, we should not go advancing on learning 100 movements. No we can practice and improve the very first movement because there's always something to learn about this movement. That's always something to go into deeper and deeper to. And actually, you see all this Tai Chi, uh, the main idea, the main benefit, it's uh, all, all of the things that human they do, it's through contraction, through struggle, let's say. Well, Tai Chi will do everything through relaxation. The contraction is very strong, so the, the main movement, the main action is relaxation, relaxing the muscles, relaxing as long as possible. And this, from this, the benefit comes. We actually feel like completely different. Yeah, I can, I can tell it in your voice. You sound, you sound very calm and relaxed. And uh, I mean, I think even now more than ever, we, we, need, our, we need ways to relax. And, um, a lot of people, you know, they, they turn to, to drinking or they eat too much or they watch Netflix all day, but I, I don't, I don't find any of those activities to be relaxing. I don't feel better at the, after I spend an hour watching Netflix, but when I do like massage or I go to karate, you know, those are activities that I've found that, have, you know, I get done and I just, I feel better. I feel more active. I feel like I've, I've done something that's made me a better person. You know, I'm getting the same kind of vibe from Tai Chi. This, all this you're saying, Ryan, it brings me to yoga. So first of all, you said that people, they turn to drinking or why should we turn to external stimulants when the secret of, because these people, they do to be happy. Right. The secret of happiness is inside ourselves. And as you said, should I go to, to karate? Should I do this? So nowadays people, they have too many choices. But the main idea is, is to look into themselves and to find out what is really for them, what belongs to them, what's their aim, what they are made to do. So keep on doing these things will make them happy 100%. They should not look to see what the other people do. It's okay, it's a different choice. I have to stick with my choice and go on, perfect myself and just be happy the way I am. I like that mindset in um, in my corner on Twitter and this uh, it's I don't know what to call it. I guess like self improvement Twitter. There's, there's a lot of people that focus on just trying to better themselves in different ways. And, and something that gets said a lot is um, you know not caring about what other people think is a superpower because it allows you to start focusing on what you need personally. And don't worry about what other people are going. Don't worry if they're going to judge you. Don't worry if they think that it's silly. Um, I felt silly the first time I did yoga. I have to admit, um, when I wanted to, when I wanted to first try yoga, I wasn't confident enough to do it in front of my girlfriend. So she was off doing whatever she was doing, and I was alone. And I found some video online, and I, and I did it a couple of times. And I'm like, all right, this is this is actually really neat. I think this can help me. And um, I had always been into like weightlifting and sports, but I'd never done yoga, and I had never really focused on stretching. So. I finally came to her and said, like, hey, I want to start doing yoga. And, you know, her jaw about hit the floor. But <laughs> after um, I told her, I just want to get, you know, more active. I think it's be a neat thing we can do together. And we started doing this class we found on YouTube or something. And uh, we're going through it together. And she's right next to me. And about five minutes in, she's, she's noticing I'm doing, like, halfway decent. She's like, wait have you done yoga before? <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe a couple of times, but she had noticed that I was like a little bit too in the flow already because I've been like cheating on her with yoga. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, what I think that people, they should not quit their other sports. Right. 
they should take yoga or tai chi or qigong to complete themselves to withdraw some wisdom from this and to use it in the other activities i also i'm very interested in team sports yeah and i like swimming i like diving i like other things as well but i take this tai chi all this relaxation and put it into the other things so one thing is to avoid injuries yes and then to know how to manage myself to know my limits to know how far i can go with this without harming my, myself and now yes i would like to share also my my experience with tai chi i remember when i just started um, i was practicing in the park and people they were laughing seeing me there. <laughs> <laughs> but secretly they're jealous they're like i wish i could do something so well, graceful and cool time when i start to learn also <laughs> qigong and then uh, i start to think as a yoga practitioner i realized that i have to improve my style and later on people they stopped and they start filming in the park or taking pictures asking questions now i guess everyone knows me in the neighborhood here and they just look they uh, stop for a while and then they uh, they continue which makes me think that i have improved within time and uh, it's it's quite a good uh, good feeling so i don't really care if people they were laughing years ago now i see that the results of my work they start to concretize into something and to I'll bet yeah. you inspire people too. I'll bet somebody walks by and then they try to figure it out. Maybe that's why they were filming it. Maybe they went home and they asked their friend, they go, do you know what this is? At least, yeah, they have, uh, they can enlarge their vision about Tai Chi, about this, because they see, uh, I remember there was once a mother with a child and the mother said, this is Tai Chi. The child said, no, this is Kung Fu. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, this style, it's a mix between Tai Chi and Kung Fu. And They're the mother said, right. so they were, they were both right. <laughs> they were both right. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so I have all this kind of experience uh, all the time. That's great. Do you practice outside often? I mean, are you typically outside when you practice? Yes, yes, yes. Almost every day. Almost every day. Yeah. Well, it Winter, takes up some summer. space, right? So, like, unless you have like a really big living room or something, you, you need a little room to move. Don't you? No, in the beginning, I used to practice in the house, but it's really? too limited, too small. No. Yeah. Outside, it's nice. Yeah, I find yeah. a nice place a pro, uh, in a park, and then I go and practice. Plus, it's it's just nicer being outside. I, I feel like you're kind of connecting with the the energy. Exactly. Of nature. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've I've found myself. Um, I've I've not try tai chi in public yet but um you know, I've, I've sat and just kind of meditated i've just kind of sat there and just enjoyed the moment you know and it's it's different when you're surrounded by trees versus like in an office chair staring at computer screens it's just a different vibe even with your eyes closed you can feel it a great yoga teacher was asked once uh, how long does he practice asanas per day he said 20 seconds how come he said yes but i practice yoga 24 hours a day. So I connect, like you said, you don't really need to go outside to practice a Tai Chi. Just go outside and connect with all these uh, energies, with nature. And it's, it's enough. It's wonderful. Yeah. I, were, were you always this, um, you, you seem very at peace, very calm. Uh, when you were younger, when you were like a teenager, were you like this? Or has this made your mood more mellow and calm? I don't think it's related to getting old, getting older. Uh, and actually feel by practicing Tai Chi, I'm getting younger somehow. <laughs> it's like reversing processes. Uh, yeah, it's, I felt the same uh, with more, the yoga. It's, you know, Ryan, you know what it is? It's, I think it's kind of a wisdom that we yeah. acquire. And it doesn't matter if we, if we are young, it's even better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Because definitely. we have more time to practice it. It's, uh, yeah, it's a uh, wisdom and we cultivate our intelligence, our capacity of analyzing things, of uh, experiencing things. When I was young, I was very, really inexperienced and ignorant, but I always like to try by myself, even if I get bored, you know, how it is. Uh, yeah. And uh, by experiencing, I start learning a lot of things, slowly, slowly. And even now I relate what I learn now with what with my previous knowledge. So I reflected into this and like when I was teenager, I used to practice breakdance. 
Really? So sometimes, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so now sometimes I, I, uh, I correlate some movements from Tai Chi with the breakdowns. I say, this is similar to this. This, yeah. they have the same, yeah. I can see uh, the speeds are different, but I can see how like the, the idea of moving your body with break dancing and Tai Chi could be like very floating, similar. you know, the idea of yeah. floating uh, at all time. That's uh, very similar in both. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I can I can picture that. <laughs> well, very cool. like that. Well, OK, so how did you get started with yoga? Was did that come with Tai Chi or was that later on? No, yoga, I've been practicing on and off uh, since I was a child. Oh, wow. Were your First, parents into I, it? I discovered the book, uh, yoga book in my grandfather's uh, bookcase. And uh, since then, uh, I was practicing yoga and I was interested in yoga. But lately, I learned more about the, um, the wisdom yoga or the yoga of the mind, which I think it's very useful or somehow more useful than the yoga of the body. Really? Now, why do you think that's more useful for the mind than the body? I think following the yoga wisdom, we can have a, a lifestyle that's turned towards what's natural yeah. and healthy, beneficial for us. Yeah. I like uh, that. Like diet-wise or uh, briefing or how to deal with problems. You see, in yoga, there is a lot of people that, I mean, all of us, we have problems or situations to solve. Yeah. Some people, they get stressed because they cannot solve it. While in yoga, we say, okay, maybe the problem is too big. I cannot find the solution today. So I postpone it for tomorrow, for next week. In the meantime, I will gather more information and I will have more clear vision about this problem and I will find a better solution. So. I like that. In this way, we always keep our mind calm, clear. We have lucidity in everything we do. So we do not spoil our mood of being happy, being in peace with ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's why I say that more like yoga of the mind. It does change your mindset. I, when I was um, two or three years ago or so, I was going through a divorce and um, you know, there, there's good days and there's bad days with divorce, just like every, um, every, everything else. Yeah. But um, it's a little bit more exaggerated where, where some of those bad days are, are really trying. And that's true I, also. I was just in a state of mind where I was like, I'll try anything if it can get me through this. So um, that was about when I started doing yoga. And I, you know, I literally found myself calming myself down by doing this. And and uh, it wasn't necessarily like I would get mad and I would go to yoga. It was just I would do yoga almost every day. And it kind of set the tone. Like the rest of the day, yes. my, my mindset was a little bit calmer and a little bit more clear-headed. And it, it made a huge difference, um, you know, that and, and journaling and a couple other things. But like you said, really resonated with me. Um, maybe I can't solve this problem today. But, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can. And then tomorrow I can focus on this problem again if I have to. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Yes. Oh, so we can, we can administrate, we can manage our life like this. Yeah. In, a, in a simple way. Yeah. Okay, so picture people listening to this right now are like, you know, maybe a, a 25 year old guy, um, you know, maybe, maybe he's, he's let his life get a little out of hand where he doesn't really know what to do. He's probably put on some weight since most of us are stuck at home. And you know, he's spending most of his days either watching Netflix or playing games or whatever. How can he go from that lifestyle to starting something active like Tai Chi or yoga? Like, what's his first step? First step to me is to get involved. No teacher will give the magic solution 100%. He needs to have, he needs to study by himself, but he should also go for some help. Contact a good teacher for Tai Chi, let's say. That will help him with a little bit of self-defense, a little bit of balance, a little bit of strengthening the body, the core, the legs, uh, improving his breathing, you know. This will come like immediately, you know, within a month. And then will gain some confidence in himself. 
But if he is up to study a little bit of yoga, a little bit how to receive food, it's a little bit, nowadays people, they say, oh, just food. Oh, no. Just food is not like that. People, they should be very aware of what they are eating. Because uh, food is very important. We, we eat every day. So what we put inside ourselves will make like ourselves, will, will keep us healthy, will keep us floating, will, will drown us. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you said it's overweight, uh, there's no magic exercise to solve the problem within one week. He has to watch his diet. Uh, in yoga, it's cultivated this diet called eight hour uh, rest between meals. Yeah. If I do not eat eight hours, then probably I'm very hungry. So I will be careful after eight hours what I eat to be nutrition wise. You know, I will not eat junk food or a bag of cheese. Maybe I will eat uh, proteins mixed with fiber, mixed with uh, all this together. So I have a consistent meal that will last me another eight hours. Yeah. Yeah, all this combined together, and then if he starts to be aware of everything what happens around him, and, uh, to select his activities, his life will completely change. I myself have a rule, and it's ru called the rule of four. And for me, we do four, four main things during the day. If one of the things doesn't go right, it's okay, it happens. If two of them, they don't go right, then we should ask some questions. But if three of them, they don't go right, or even four of them, they don't go right, it's clear that we are in the wrong path. Yes. We have to steer the boat in another direction. It's just like that. Okay. I, it makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Um, I, I like what you said about the food thing, because I, I think that's a starting point for a lot of people. And, um, you know, for some people, they get this mindset where it's like, I'm going to eat, but then I'm going to work out and it's okay. But the, the calories, the math doesn't work right. You know, you can, you can eat 1,200 calories in a meal fairly simply and then, you know, go and try to do like a workout for 1,200 calories. You're going to be in there for a couple of hours really sweating. Um, it's, it's tough to, it's hard to outrun your fork, right? So you got to start with your diet first, I think. Um, yes. Getting back to like a natural diet, I think you were kind of hitting at that, whereas uh, avoiding the junk food and eating more like, you know, fruit, veggies, meat, like real food yes. that exists in the real world, not the overly processed stuff. So, um, it's true. yeah, I, I've gotten away from eating processed food, but I still have it in the house. So occasionally I'll, I'll find myself eating something and well, I forget what I was eating the other day, but it was, it was some kind of a process. I don't, I don't we, know. We cannot also be the saints of food. Yes. <laughs> we cannot, you know, we eat of everything. The thing is to have moderation and to be aware of what we eat. Yeah. If once in a while, occasionally we're going to drink a glass of wine, there will be no drama, or, you know, a beer with a friend. If we, any abuse, it's wrong. Anything in moderation is just good. Yeah. And we should get orientated, as you said, of food that's less processed, more natural, fresh things, uh, raw vegetables, these things that bring us life, like a live food. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, uh, I think it affects your energy levels too. You know, cause I, I noted that after I'd eaten, um, maybe there were wheat thins, I don't remember, but I, I had eaten like a lot of them. And like the rest of the day, I just, I felt sluggish. I was less productive. I didn't feel like working out. And then the next day I was guilty. So I, I, I felt bad and I worked out a lot harder and I ate cleaner. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. No, you should not be guilty. You know, this body in yoga, I said it's a machine. How we yeah. manage it? Once day we put a, a very bad quality gasoline. Okay. It will splatter a little bit. Okay. Next day <laughs> we put the best gasoline. So it will work fine. That, that's okay. it. I like yeah. that. That's a, that's a very calming mindset instead of, you know, trying to push yourself too hard. It's, you know, forgive yourself a little bit. I, I think some of those, some of those extreme diets, some of those people that take things too hard, they, they set themselves up for failure where it's like you expect the perfect result, but you know, not every day is going to be perfect. Right. hundred percent. You see in this yeah. equation, we should put also the time. We might succeed in a short run, 
to be to achieve certain performances but time as time advances is we live and die in the same time we're getting to old age so if we're going to set a, a immense goal that will be unrealistic because time is not on our side <laughs> unfortunately yes. so yeah. with time advances we should be realistic with everything we plan we should be very realistic and then we will more likely not get very wrong but if we set big things and not they are not really realistic then we'll fail and then failure it it doesn't feel right right yeah yeah it's it's more about like the small daily acts and less about the big overarching goals you know yes yes, yes. yeah and Every pyramid was built with a white base, so we should build with a base that will sustain all this. Dreams and everything. We should be realistic with now dreams once again. Yes. I like that idea. Every pyramid starts with the base, yeah. And yeah. people see the pyramid, they wanna, they wanna get to the top right away. And they, yes. they don't yes. pay attention to the, the foundation first. And it's, it's yes. hard, you know. I know this a lot with, with kids, you know, they, they always want the, the crazy exciting thing, but they don't want to work to get to it, you know. No, without work, it's not really feasible, no. Yeah. And this work gives also the sense of accomplishment, of personal uh, realizing that self-esteem, that I'm able to do this, I'm capable. This one will turn us towards being happy, being an uh, accomplished human being having a great mood, being generous. All these, yeah. they come together as a package. It's always a package. Yeah. <laughs> so is this your package? You have the, the Tai Chi and the yoga and the Qi Kong? Is that your package that you and together? Mainly, it's, this, this was for me. Some mm -hmm. other people that could be a car mechanic. You know yeah. Kung Fu. Kung Fu, it means the, the achievement, the excellence. So it doesn't matter that someone is a cook, a mechanic, or a, I don't know, Tai Chi yeah. practitioner, as long as they're doing like a state of art. Okay, so yeah, they have their own little, um, you know, group together. I get that. I, I've, um, I've changed a lot in the last few years. And like, like you said, like putting it all together, creating this package, I can see the advantage of that. And I, I didn't really even realize this until I, just now, but, um, you know, I, I've taken up Taekwondo, I've taken up writing, and then I've been doing um, these Spartan races, like these these obstacle course races. And, and those three things together, they, they've really helped form this new person that I've become. And uh, they all kind of balance each other out. Whereas the, the Taekwondo is part of me giving back to the community. Um, the Spartan races are my motivation to work out because I've, I've got a day where I have to go and do this run. And if I don't work out, in the weeks leading up to it, you know, I'm not going to perform well. And, and then the writing is just how I, I keep all this sane. <laughs> so yes. I, I like the idea of putting together a, a package. And I think, I think what happens with some of these young guys, I know it happened to me in my, my early twenties is I want the whole package right away. I want to feel complete and it's just not feasible. It's something that takes time to build. Yes, and exactly. It takes I think, time, patience. Patience. It's a virtue. Yeah. And, you know, I look back on it and I kept trying different things. And, you know, piece by piece, you start realizing, you know, this works, this is not working very good. So we'll, we'll get rid of that and then find something new. And that's one, that's why people tell you, especially in your 20s, to, you know, experiment, try some new things, try that's Tai Chi, cool. try yoga, go running. Maybe you won't like it, but at least you'll know. You know, and then as you get older, you start becoming that complete package where you realize what you're good at and what works for you. That's true, yes. Yeah. We should always experience. We should always be open. Yeah. Be inclusive. Let yeah. everything try to learn. To, yeah. yeah, I like I that. I always idea. consider myself a student in the first grade. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's, that's, that's definitely true. I, I always say this, there's everyone knows something that I don't. So like, you know, even somebody that doesn't seem educated, doesn't seem smart, you look at him like, there's something he knows way better than I do. Oh, yes, I know oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And sometimes we could be really surprised. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, yeah. You never know what people um, can teach you. No, um, not you know, at all. Spe wow. Especially the way life is now, where everything's so specialized. Uh, there's, everyone's got their story to tell, and everyone's got something to share. So, yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, do you um, do you only teach adults, or do you do you have kids that do the Tai Chi classes as well? Oh, not really. I tried, I tried, but uh, it didn't really work. There were not enough uh, youngs, yeah. youngsters. To, uh, I practiced with my son until uh, one year ago. Now he changed, he's into more to games and piano. Yeah. But he was quite good. And I had some kids, uh, I trained them before. But then when I was about to form a whole group, it didn't it didn't happen so. stand up and i can I still have a hope yeah it's a slower paced thing so i can see the the challenge to get kids to join in on that it's uh, it's also the perception that uh tai chi it's an exercise for seniors and it's no. very slow movements in a park which is just uh, the um, the top of the iceberg right. you know because it's a lot hidden Yes. Yeah, right. You know, the same could be said of golf. You know, like golf's like an old person's game, but you still see young people playing it. So I would argue that just because old people do it doesn't mean it's only for that demographic. You know, I, I, I think no, there's a no, benefit no. for it, especially, you know, kids that maybe have like attention disorders or they, they struggle to focus. It'd be a challenge to teach them, but I could see there might be a benefit through that. For sure, for sure, yeah. 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 To keep them focused, uh, yes. Yeah, interesting. Um, do you do you know when um, you're expected to start opening up classes, like in, in physical locations, or is that still up in the air? Because he, here in Tennessee, yes. they're, they're starting to still open some the, things. Uh, that's still in the air. Uh, that's no news. Yeah. I hope, because uh, now, now there will be a summer break soon, yeah. end of uh, June. So I hope I will restart in September. Okay, yeah. No, Given the situation, that's, that is. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it is what it is. It's, it's been a challenge for everyone. So uh, the idea of being able to do these classes online, I mean, that's, that's a huge advantage to you. And I, I think people that are that, sitting at home, if they, they don't have, you know, work or they can't go to the gym this is a good replacement something new they can try and, and i think people are looking for you know distractions right now yes yes um, that actually technology enables us to do amazing things yeah yeah well how long have you been um on youtube and how long have you been teaching like online a month too oh really oh, <laughs> you're just getting started yes before i was so busy doing the things uh, <laughs> in person or you know with humans now it's just me in front of the camera <laughs> yeah i i know i've i've seen some people locally that have like been forced into the online world like almost reluctantly and then some of them were kind of excited about it they said hey, we've got some students that i haven't seen in months all of a sudden they're showing up this is great <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true no before so, i was really busy uh, i used to work uh, seven seven days a week so. oh wow I now. didn't have much time for. Uh, yeah. Do you think you'll continue doing it online when you go back to working on? Yes. It? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Really. Well, yes. Maybe really. a blessing then in disguise. Where. I you know, will. Because uh, this one, uh, you see, in front of the camera, I can really do what I like in a way. What yeah. I like to convey to people, to show, to while. Um, while I'm with clients or with students, I have to adjust myself to, to them. Yeah, okay. So it's a different, uh, yes. So I will try to do both in the future. I think that's smart. I think there's, I think it's a good way for you to, um, to reach new people and to get them to maybe even come visit you in person too. Um, but yeah, no, social media is, it's just, it's a, it's a really cool way to reach people. I, you know, I, I've found some incredibly interesting people that I've known to talk to online that I never would have just because geographically we're nowhere near each other. Yes. You know, um, like earlier this morning, I'm, I'm talking to a, a friend who's in England and, you know, I've had this podcast, um, the last guest was also in England. So the world feels, it's funny, we're not online right now, but everyone we're not in person as much right now, but everyone's going online. So in, in, in some ways we're getting more connected. Um, some people are being forced reluctantly to join the online world, but um, I, I think there's benefits to it. 
So. No, yeah, I heard some opinions, uh, some reluctant opinions, but I'm totally for it. <laughs> I mean, if we know how to manage it, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. I keep in touch with my school in China. I can see them almost every day, which is amazing. That, miles and miles away. And yeah. Wow. The school in China is where you, you um, used to practice Tai Chi? Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And I saw them like two weeks ago. Uh, they were practicing. Uh, they had this social distance with masks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's well, we're, we've been at the Taekwondo Dojo where I've been practicing. Um, it was like a week or two, I think, where they, they were trying to stay open, even though when this this was kind of starting to become a problem, this corona thing. And uh, yeah, we did the social distancing thing where the kids were a little bit more spread apart than normal. And I think we're going to go back to that here in a week or so. But uh, it's better than nothing. I, people are ready to get back to their normal lives. Not everyone, but I think some people are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good deal. Um, so when's the last time you were at your school in China? Uh, like uh, one year ago. One year. Okay, so they still remember you. They still know you well. Yes, 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 yes. That's really neat that you can... Do you, um, do you speak Mandarin or Cantonese or... Few words, few words. Yeah, just no. enough to get by? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> do, Nowadays, do there's also technology, you know. We have all this... Uh, telephone uh, application so there was one i was yeah. speaking to and it was translating directly into chinese and wow. then there was one i could uh, read all the writings really Just, yes that's amazing it, it, on my telephone it was automatically translated into english that's uh, incredible. just uh, putting the telephone on the text and yes that's incredible it's amazing I've... that's why i'm totally for the technology and <laughs> helps us greatly oh it's great yeah I, I got this duolingo app on my phone i've been trying to learn spanish on it and i, I don't practice it enough but it, it's helped and last um last fall i was in mexico and i got to like you know practice it a little bit in person and it's like mind-blowing oh my gosh i actually speak a little bit of this so i gotta find this app what's the do you know what the name of the app was for it translated for you for the chinese yeah uh or is it just chinese or does it do like any language uh, we can set the language. Yeah. I think it's a Google or it's like Google, uh, Google Translate. I, I don't I don't remember. I don't yeah. remember. That's I will okay. I will text it to you later for yeah, sure. Yeah, text it. We'll put it in the <laughs> we'll put it in the links below. <laughs> That's yes, what we need. Yes, yes. Very cool. It's it's really cool. We can set it on the image, on picture, and then it's like taking a picture, but the text will be translated automatically on the screen. That's incredible. There's um yes. There's a so it helped me a lot to read the menu in the restaurant where there were <laughs> yes. no pictures or things that's, like that. That's the most important part. <laughs> there's a there's a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, and in the book, they have this thing called the babblefish. And it's like this, it's like a fish that you put, the book's ridiculous, but it's a fish that you put in your ear and it hears other languages and translates into whatever you speak. So it's the same concept in like, you know, in this book, it feels like science well, fiction. Well, the fish is here now. <laughs> the fish is here now. <laughs> that is, that's incredible. Very cool. I do, um, yes. Well, I, I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, but tell me, um, tell me some of the benefits of, of yoga, like even like physically, because I've noticed personally that um, it's, it's made me a more flexible person. Um, and, and which sounds funny, but that actually helps me with my weightlifting, because um, you get that better range of motion. And it's something I neglected as um, a teenager and you know, a young adult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, uh, let's say about the weight problem. Okay. Weight to to lose weight, we should change our lifestyle. That's clear. And then uh, we should do. There's a whole theory of doing. Uh, light exercises but many many repetitions so at that part of the body the fat will be burned but yoga mainly what is a stance what is uh, all these positions of yoga it's a certain geometry and it aligns the body to be connected with the the forces we are talking a while ago like uh, 
cosmic forces, nature. So doing all these positions, yoga position, it's balance ourselves somehow with the natures, okay. with everything. It's much more than, uh, let's say, uh, I do this to lose weight. It's I do this to balance myself. When I'm balance myself, I can do anything. I can lose weight, I can manage my life, I can manage my thinking, my thoughts, my emotions, everything. As we said, it comes as a package. This yoga, it's a completely renewing ourselves, rebaptizing ourselves, like, you know, they pour water. I it's like exactly that like that. Getting yeah. into this and I become an improved myself. An yeah. improved me, yes. Like a baptized. Yes. This is a real yoga. Yeah. I mean, if um, I go to some place and I do some stretches at school yoga, it's not really the authentic yoga. Authentic yoga, it touches the mind. It makes us vibrate in a certain way with all these techniques. Yoga is very powerful. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've never done this, but have you ever done the, uh, like the hot yoga classes? Where they, they turn the heat up and then <laughs> they do yoga. <laughs> I, I think it's like a silly Americanized version of yoga. I, I refuse to do it. <laughs> no, I didn't go because uh, I myself am very interested in Tai Chi. I mainly yeah. read or watch things about yoga. Okay. I'm more interested, as I said, in the mind yoga than yeah. the physical yoga. I know several postures and I practice them almost every day. The postures that help me with the Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. I just take from this body, yoga of the body, what I need for my practice. But mainly okay. I study and I read about uh, what goes into our mind, how our mind is organized by this system. Actually, yoga, it's a science. Really? Okay. It's a science of managing ourselves, managing our health, managing our life. I've never really read much about it. I've, I've taken classes. I've watched other people like, instruct yoga. Where would you even start when it comes to like studying or reading yoga? That's a good question. Yeah, text me some links then. We'll, uh, we'll put them in there. But I, I will always start to study maybe the meditation techniques. Okay. And breathing. And breathing. Yeah. yeah. Breathing, it's, it's the key to to many things, to almost everything. In, in yeah. Tai Chi, we use uh, breathing. In Qigong, we use breathing. In yoga, there's use. In everything, if we do not know how to breathe, we cannot perform. We will stop. The race will be very short. Yeah, so yeah. So managing, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I know like in, in yoga, you, you'll, you'll start in a certain pose, you breathe in, then you move, and you breathe out. It's, is it a similar thing with Tai Chi? Where, you know, you, you exactly, pose, exactly. So it's exactly like that. Uh, tai Chi, it's well known for that oh. first movement when we lift the arms and then we lower the arms by inhale, exhale. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Very cool. It always, it always starts with that, yes. That's very interesting. I, I think I need to get started in some Tai Chi. It's something I've seen before. I knew what it was. I just, I, I never really even considered um, taking it up, but I like starting something new. I like new challenges, and I, I think this might be uh, this might be the next one. <laughs> you can experience this for sure, for sure. It's yeah. highly recommended to experience this. Uh, Very cool. This, and every teacher has something to give uh, everyone. For Absolutely. me, every practitioner, Tai Chi practitioner, should adapt it to its own body because there's no singular procedure there's no singular way to do it you know everyone could develop its own style within time it makes to look sense wonderful to 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 bring the grace into its, its own movements yes. okay so like everyone's got their own unique little it's, it's like an art it's yeah. an art yeah it's an art. absolutely that's exciting well very cool and then to bring this grace into daily life well, tell me more about that. How how is um, how does the physical act of like practicing Tai Chi affect your daily life? How does that change you? 
how does that change me? Well, you see, I, I try to take this Tai Chi into everything I do. Yeah. Like to be, to, to, to be in this relaxation mode. To do everything in a, on a relaxed pace. I like and that. To be more efficient, being more relaxed at the same time. Just to calm down and, and to be in the moment and, and not to be too anxious about things that you know may or may not even happen. Not at all. But in the same time, to be focused on the action. Exactly. To see where things they go and to be able to correct them to, by eliminating any destruction. By just focused and being relaxed. Yes. Awesome. That's the, Very cool. Yeah, no, that's that's really interesting. I I think um I think everybody could benefit by um trying to slow down a little bit, be in the moment, and to just to connect with their breathing. It's it sounds so simple, but it, it really is a profound change once you start to practice it. It's, you know, as they say, less is more. Yeah, less is more. That's, that's very good. As if I, I try to do 1,000 things, my attention is distributing in many, many yeah. directions. Actually, I accomplished almost nothing. Yeah. yeah but I, if I take a few things, then I perfect them, I uh, put them together, I make them turn, and then I can go on with this, that really uh, the results are there and also it gives me the sense of satisfaction. I see live this. with this a completed life. I, I see this all the time where people, they, they take on too much, they try to be, you know, the best at every little thing instead of, you know, focusing on what, what's working, you know, focus in on that and, and then remove the distractions. Yeah. People, I think they should focus on what they really are, what they really are themselves, not yeah. to see what some other people do. That yeah. doesn't matter to us too much. Yeah, it's really... That we just... Well, yes. Yeah, I think it's really We could get the to, inspiration uh, a little bit, but uh, I really like philosophy and I follow philosophers, but I do not try to get a philosopher myself. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I'm I'm that right there with you. I'm I'm not a philosopher either. Um, but I I think it's interesting. I, you know, it's it's interesting to learn from people that lived so long ago. Um, like Marcus Aurelius, uh, the, these these great ancient Greek Stoics. I, I think they have a lot that you know they lived in such a different time, and yet you read you read what they're journaling about, and it's it's so um, relevant to today's world it's it's mind-blowing it's amazing how like a lot of their problems are the same problems that we're having today you know and, and then learning how they dealt with them it's it's fascinating they, they talk about kind of so kind of what you were talking about earlier where um the idea of stoicism is that if you can't control it don't worry about it but if you can control it you know that's where you need to focus your energy on yeah and then yes, just yes. learn to let go of what's outside of your control if we put on atten our attention onto the things, we'll slowly, slowly get a grip on them and, and yeah. we will get control. Yeah. Absolutely. We all, all we need is to, to focus on the thing that really interests us and not to take anything for granted or anything that will be too easy because nothing is easy. Even uh, a relation, a friendship relation or a marriage, it's like a job. Yeah. <laughs> we should work it. We should build it from the yeah. scratch yes yeah. and then it will work the level of involvement will show the level of results yeah absolutely um it's like uh you gotta lay the foundation like the pyramid and then, and then build from there and build from there um you know some people are finding now that they're stuck in their home with their girlfriend or wife or husband or whatever and they're, they're realizing that they've been so distracted and so busy and they never really had a chance to build anything. And, and now they have to do that. And, and some of them, that's a great chance. They're letting it crumble. Others are, I think some are probably doing okay. But they're just now they're building the relationship, but you know, for all these months, and years, whatever. I'm, they, a, they never I'm a very big adept of Taoists, of Lao yeah. Tzu. And Lao Tzu said that uh, we should give attention to everyone and we should find in everything that happens a great opportunity. So as you said, the couple now is stuck at home. 
it's a wonderful time to share a lot of time together to yeah. to come to connect to I like you know, to talk about a lot of things yeah they should yeah. find an opportunity in everything like we were talking of social media now now mm -hmm. is the great time to to see old friends to connect with the family to, yeah. yes yeah no i've i've been trying to take a time I'm still working pretty hard. <laughs> I'm still busy, so I don't feel like I'm on break like some people are. But um, I've been, I've been trying to take time at least a couple of times a week just to call some random person, somebody that you know is a good friend, but maybe I, I haven't heard from them in a while. Hey, just wanted to see what things are like over here. What have you been up to? You know, and people are like it used to be back and back when everybody was working hard and and. Uh, the world is more conventional or normal or whatever you want to call it back then they didn't have time for you I'm like oh i'm busy I, I gotta take the kids to soccer practice or whatever now they're like oh hey <laughs> it's good to hear from you they, they have more time they're more relaxed they're more interested in having that conversation it's kind of in some ways this has been nice yes i find it wonderful yes yeah and mm -hmm. also i look uh, i look outside and then i see the trees they did not stop uh, blooming <laughs> and the animals they did not stop going around so life continues which is wonderful and we should benefit from all of this we should get wiser from all this yeah i absolutely. hope somehow <laughs> i hope so happen. too I, I think i think some people are learning from it i think almost everybody is gaining some kind of kernel of truth from it and you know it, it's one of those things where it's like you're in the storm and whenever the storm comes through, you can't see anything. It doesn't make sense. But then when the storm clears and you look back on it, you have this clarity and it starts making more sense to you. And, and you realize maybe it wasn't the greatest experience, but you learn something through it. And, you know, diamonds aren't formed by easy times. They're, they're formed under being crushed. The coal gets crushed under pressure, this enormous pressure. And, it's these great moments like this when the pressure seems the strongest that it makes you the sharpest and the strongest and the best. Yes. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I mean, within time, with and within, when we go out, life will never be our way. Yeah. What Thanks. what we expect it will never happen. So, from all this, it's great learnings great I mean, teaching to us yeah, so <laughs> you're definitely right we, about that yes. <laughs> well sebastian it's been fantastic talking to you um you, you taught me a lot about tai chi um about chi kong which i knew literally nothing about um where can people find you and where can people learn more uh, if, if they want to learn more about tai chi and, and everything else that you teach well people they can find me on facebook my name is Sebastian Constantini, and then uh, we're creating now a Facebook page called Tai Chi International, and also we have a YouTube channel called, as well, Tai Chi International. For now, these are the main things. We okay. also have a website, Tai Chi International as well. Perfect. That I like that it's all the same. I think that's that's one of the secrets. So <laughs> we'll we'll link to all those in the show notes below. And um, I think you I think you definitely educated some people on something that they knew very little about. So thank you, um, thank you for coming Pleasure. on the show. It's all mine. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Sebastian. All right. This is Ryan Feldman with another exciting episode of the Pats Manners Podcast. Signing off. <laughs>